So we are doing section 6.6, and it's a continuation of what we've been doing. Um, instead of doing this class opener, I'm going to jump right in. Um, here are the notes. I hope we remember these notes that we've already covered, right? Yeah. Any root, and inside the root, you could have any base. It could be an X, a Y, a Z. It could even be a number. And it could have any power, and you could rewrite this radical. You could rewrite the radical as a rational exponent. What's a rational exponent? It's an exponent that's really a fraction. And the fraction will have the root number down here in the denominator and the power up here on the numerator. Okay, so it's that simple. It's like rearranging things. Your root is down, whoops. Your root is down here. Your power is up here. And the base is still the base right there. Okay. So we should be able to use these notes to write a rational exponent as a radical and also write a radical as a rational exponent. And also when we're doing math, you do not want to leave a radical or a rational exponent in the denominator. So again, we do not want to leave a radical or a rational exponent in the denominator. This is all stuff that we've already covered. So I hope that uh, we could just move on and, and practice some of this stuff. So right here on number one, if you know this, these notes right here, you should be able to easily rewrite this as a rational exponent. I mean, as in radical form. It already is a rational exponent. You want to write it in radical form. So what root do we have here? What root? The, the third root, right? The, the denominator is a root. The numerator is the power. And the base stays the base in there, right? So the x is going to be inside the root. And we said we're going to begin with this third root. So we have the third root of x to what power? Square. Second power, square. That's right. And we're done. So easy, right? Super easy. That's like a free point on the quiz this week. And it's going to be like a free point on the test next week. Okay. Um, and again, knowing these notes, you could also go from a radical to a rational exponent or from a rational exponent back to a radical. Right here, we have a radical, and they want us to write it in exponential form. So what would that be in exponential form? X to the what? Four-fifths power. That's right. Power over root. Power over root. So those are ridiculously easy. Let's move on to something more fun, like number three says evaluate 8 to the negative 2 thirds power. Um, we do need to go back and remember that negative exponents, you have to grab them and move them to the other side of the fraction. You guys remember that from exponents? So we have this 8 to the negative 2 thirds power. We're going to grab it and move it to the other side of the fraction. If you're thinking what fraction, go ahead and put a fraction bar right there. And obviously, when you rewrite this thing, the 8 to the 2 thirds is going to be on the bottom. And there's going to be nothing left up on top. So we have this fraction 1 over 8 to the 2 thirds. Now, the sentence that I wanted you to remember is that you do not want to leave a radical in the denominator. You don't also want to leave a rational exponent in the denominator, because technically a rational exponent is a radical. This is saying the third root of 8 squared, right? So uh, we could move this up or not move this up, but get rid of this by thinking, multiplying by 8 to a certain power. OK? Multiplying by 8 to a certain power. Now, what power would that have to be so that when I combine it with 2 thirds, it'll become 1 whole? 1 third. So yeah, that's exactly right. We're going to put 8 to the 1 third, and also do it to the top, multiply by 8 to the 1 third. So up on top, it's easy. 1 times 8 to the 1 third is 8 to the 1 third. And on the bottom, it's also easy. 2 thirds plus 1 third, we made it 8 to the 3 thirds, which becomes one, one whole, which we're just going to leave as 8 in the denominator. Now, is there anything else we could do? Yes. The top 8 to the 1 third, that's really the third root of 8. And it's still over 8. And what is the third root of 8? So we have a 2 up there over 8 on the bottom. So that answer, final answer, will be 1 fourth. Final answer is 1 fourth. Now, 
the beauty about math is that there's so many different roads to the same place, right? So uh, you could walk out your front door and walk to your neighbor's house by going around the block, right? Or you could walk out your front door and just go straight to your neighbor's house, right? Many roads to the same place. What, what, what do I mean by that? If we go back to right when I did my first step, I moved this to the bottom. If I would have recognized, if I, were, if I were comfortable with my notes, if I would recognize that this is a third root of eight, and I know that I could do the third root of eight. What's the third root of eight? Two. And then the power, just take the two and put the power on it. What's two to the second power? Four. So you get the answer, one fourth. Boom, you're done. Right? So many roads to the same place, right? Once again, uh, this, this, yeah, that one's way easier, right? So I just wanted to show you a long way and then a short way. So here's the, the short way to understand that this guy right here is really the third root of eight squared. Now you could put the square on the inside or you could put the square on the outside like this. It's totally up to you, right? I'd probably put it on the outside because the third root of eight is two and then two squared is four. So our final answer is the one on top over four on the bottom, right? Even if you would have put the two on the inside instead of the outside, that would have been eight squared is 64. And what's the third root of 64? It's also four. So you'd end up with the same answer. Many roads to the same place. I hope I'm not confusing you. I just want to show you different angles. Yeah? Okay. So moving on. Number four. Again, there's many different ways of doing this. Could anybody think of any way of doing this? Can we turn it into a square root? That's what you said. Absolutely. We could do that, right? So we could change this rational exponent into a, a radical. So what kind of root do we have? Obviously, we have a, a square root. So we're going to write this as the square root, which obviously you don't need a 2 right there, of negative 16 to the third power. Yay? Yay? Now, I could put that third power in here, or I could put it on the outside of the whole thing. What do you prefer? Uh, outside, of the whole thing. outside of the whole thing, right? I mean, who would really want to go negative 16 times negative 16 times negative 16? Get a huge, huge number, right? And then think of the square root of that huge number. Nah, no thanks. Right here, we could do this. We all know this in our heads. What is the square root of negative 16? Negative 4i. Four. 4i, four I. Four I, right? Okay. So what I really have here is uh, 4i right in there, which really means 4i times 4i times 4i. And we know that 4i times 4i is 16i squared, but we should remember that i squared is really what? Negative 1. So what I really have here is uh, negative 16. And then we still need to multiply it by the 4i. And 16 times 4i is negative 64i. So that's our answer right there. What do you think? And that's just one way of doing it, right? Again, let's, let's try to look at this differently, like from a totally different angle. Like we could look at this thing and be like, oh, that's, that right there is an improper fraction. So maybe, let's go back over here, and maybe I could write this improper fraction as a mixed number, which I could, right? What's a mixed number? Three halves is really what? One and one half. So imagine that one and one half. We just rewrote this three halves to one and one half. Now, there was a little trick I showed you before that you could split the base and put that negative 16 with the power of one times another negative 16 with the power of half. So what is negative 16 to the power of one? That's just negative 16. And what is negative 16 to the power of half? That's really the square root of 16, which gives you 4i, right? So I, I don't want to confuse you, but I just want to show you different angles. You got negative 16 times the square root of negative 16. And the square root of negative 16 is 4i. And when you multiply it by 16, negative 16, you end up with the same answer as we did before. This gives you negative 64i. Same answer, just done a different way. 
Maybe I should stop doing all these different ways. Okay, I'll stop doing all the different ways. I'll just stick to one. But I just want to emphasize, like, if you're doing a, a math problem a certain way and you look at your partners and he's doing something totally different, that doesn't mean that you're wrong or it doesn't mean that he or she's wrong. Maybe you're both just doing it a totally different way and get to the same answer. Many roads to the same place. Number five, ridiculously easy. That's really rule one of exponents. Whenever you're multiplying with the same base, what do you do with the exponents? You add them. So it becomes a fifth grade addition problem of fractions, which is super easy because we do have a common denominator. So the answer here is going to be what? Just G. Because if you go two thirds plus one third, that's three thirds and three thirds is really just one. And it's not even necessary to write G to the one power. You could just say G. Number six, what do we do when we have a power to a power? So how do we multiply fractions? It's really easy. Top with the top, bottom with the bottom. What do I get? U to the four tenths. Now, of course, we are simplifying. So we want to make anything simpler if we can. So four tenths reduces down to two fifths. Final answer is U to the two fifths. By the way, this answer is in exponential form, Vivi. But if I asked you to write it in radical form, what would it be? That's right. And that's what you're going to say, right? Yeah. yeah. The fifth root of u to the second power is correct. OK, the root is on the bottom, tops of power. So you could say uh, the fifth root of u to the second power. So there's your answer as a radical. So sometimes I'll ask you to write it in exponential form, sometimes radical form. They both mean the same thing. They just look different. Um, even another way, another acceptable answer would have been to put the power of two on the outside. So you could have said the fifth root of u and then put the power of two on the outside. That's totally fine. It's the same thing as that, OK? Uh, number seven, this is starting to get a little more fun. Whenever you have a negative exponent, you have to grab it, move it to the other side, and it'll become positive, right? So we do have a negative exponent here. We're going to grab it, the whole thing, move it to the other side of the fraction. What fraction? This fraction. I'm going to put that blue fraction bar right there. I want to rewrite it over here. Since there's going to be nothing left up on top, I put a 1. On the bottom, I will have the same thing. Why? But it's positive 3 fourths now. Yay? OK. Now, we just said that you don't want to leave a radical in the denominator. You don't want to leave even a rational exponent in the denominator. So this is where we've got to start using our brains. We do not want y to the 3 fourths down here. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by y to the what power? Y to the what power? Uh, yep, one fourth is correct. One fourth is correct. Now remember, you want to when you add this three fourths plus a different fraction, you want to make it four fourths to make it whole. So yeah, three fourths plus one fourth will give you the four fourths, and you'll have no more radical in the denominator. You have no more fraction as an exponent in the denominator, and that's what we want. The answer is y on the bottom, up on top, also multiplied by y to the one fourth. So one times y to the one fourth is y to the 1 fourth up here. There's your answer in exponential form, y to the 1 fourth over y. But I'll tell you now, most of the time, you're going to see them in radical form. So what's a radical form answer? The fourth root of y over y. Perfect. Could it get more fun? Heck yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're going to move this exponent, or the whole thing that has a negative exponent, down to the other side of this fraction. So we have the fraction. There's nothing left up on top. The b to the negative 2 fifths, after you move it, becomes b to the positive 2 fifths. OK, you know what? Let me, uh, let me make that 2 fifths a little clearer, nicer. 2 fifths. So Israel, yes. I need to get rid of this rational exponent. I want it to be a regular whole b, not b to the 2 fifths. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by what? b to the 3 fifths is absolutely right. b to the 3 fifths. Once again, guys, you want to make a whole. So 2 fifths plus what else would give you three? Uh, would give you 5 fifths? 3 fifths, right? 2 plus 3 is the 5, and you need 5 over 5 for it to become whole. So uh, up on top. You have b to the 3 fifths. On the bottom, you have a regular b. You could put b to the 1, but that's kind of silly. You don't need the 1 right there. 
And that's your answer in exponential form. In radical form, it will be the fifth root of b to the third. It's always the root and then the power. So the fifth root of b to the third, the fifth root of b to the third over b. So keep it over b. There's your answer. Oh yeah, it's time for some fun. Look at this guy. No, that's not even a monster. That's like, that's like easy. Guys, guys, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If you had x to the 10th, if you had x to the 10th over x to the 7th, what would you do? Uh, x to the 10th over x to the 7th. I mean, forget the fractions. If you had x to the 10th over x to the 7th, what would you do? Yeah, it'd be x to the third, right? It ends up being kind of like a subtraction problem, right? Th that's exactly right. Now, let me visually show that to everybody. I'm going to move this up to the top. But of course, when you move something from one side to the other, you have to change the sign of the exponent. So this is really going to become an x to the negative 4 sevenths. Bless you. Does that make sense? I know you're thinking, wait a minute, negative exponents, that's when you move it. Yeah, but I'm using that rule backwards. I'm moving it, and then I change the sign to a negative. Now, why would I do that? Because now I have x to the 5 sevenths times x to the negative 4 sevenths. And that means that you could combine those exponents. 5 sevenths take away 4 sevenths equals 1 seventh. So that's your answer, x to the 1 seventh. But as a radical, it's going to be the seventh root of x to the one, or just the seventh root of x. What do you think? It's time to finally move on to something really entertaining. Oh, oh come on. What do you mean, oh? That thing is beautiful. How could you guys be? This is fun. <laughs> Guys, here's the problem with math. If, if you look at a problem and you're like, oh, I, that's just looks too confusing and then give up. Yeah, do it. it's not, it, you're not gonna get anywhere if you, if you don't start somewhere, right? So there are many roads to the same place, right? Many roads to the same place. So there's many different ways of solving this problem. Any ideas? Okay, so yeah, you could technically multiply this X with that X, which means you'd have to combine those exponents, right? And that'd just be one half take away three fourths, and you'd have to get a common denominator, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's one way of doing it. What's another another way, another road? You could take this negative exponent and move it up, right? And then and then you could multiply there, which means you'd have to add those fractions and, and get a common denominator. Or yet another way of doing it would be to move everything up, right? You could. Like say, okay, I'm definitely going to move this one up, which is going to give me times x to the uh, positive 3 fourths power. And then I'm going to move this guy up, which will give me x to the negative 1 half power. And the 3 didn't have a negative exponent. It has to stay on the bottom. Yay? So what am I really doing? Okay, let, let me actually scratch this out and this out so we don't get confused. The only thing left on the bottom right now is 3. Okay. So what do we need to do? Up on top, we've got to multiply x times x times x. So what do we do? We combine the exponent, combine the exponent, combine the exponent. So in reality, what we have here is a fraction problem where I need to add the negative 1 half, I'm going to do this on the side, plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. That's the real math going on. And whatever answer I get is really going to be the exponent of x. Are you with me? Okay, so what common denominator would you have with 2, 3, and 4? 12. Great. 12, 12, 12. How do I change 2 to become 12? I multiply by 6, so I multiply by 6 up here. I will get a negative 6 up there. Okay, and then I have, how do I change the 3 to become 12 times 4 times 4? I will have an 8 up here. That's great. Okay, and then how do I change the 4 to become a 12? I multiply by 3, multiply by 3, I end up with a 9 up here. So now that I have the common denominator 12 on all denominators, I simply do negative 6 plus 8. What's that? 
2. And what's 2 plus 9? 11. So we really end up with 11 twelfths. Now, that is the exponent of x. I hope we all understand that. So up on top, I have x to the 11 twelfths power. And on the bottom, I have what? Three. Three. And guess what? I'm done. If, if the answer if the answer is in, in exponential form, that's it. But let's change it to radical form because uh, it's probably going to be in radical form. So what's my radical form answer? The 12th root, x to the 11 over 3. See, that was not that hard, but everybody freaks out. Now, I do admit, um, if, if you would have combined these two, it would be longer, and then you'd have to move it up and then combine over there. It would have been longer. The, the, the way I explained it here is probably the most direct, quickest way. So I hope this helps you. We do have a practice that I want to assign it's from the book, page 426, 16 through 27. I know you guys say you don't have a book. That's why I took the picture of it. It's in Google Classroom. So when you look at it, the, some, of, some of them are super easy. It says write each expression in radical form or write each radical in exponential form. So it's as simple as this. That's, this is exponential form. Let's write it in radical form. What's the, the radical form of number 16? Come on, guys. The fifth root of eight. That's it. Come on, Israel. All right, now, number 20, I have it in radical form. I want it as a rational exponent. What's it going to be? 17 to the one half power. Okay, so there's some easy questions like that. And then we also have down here uh, some questions where you need a common denominator, right? And... Uh, we also have some like challenging ones, like the one that we just did at the very end. So uh, I don't know, I'm give, gonna give you the rest of the class to get on Google Classroom and work on these. Um, good luck. If you guys need any help, let me know.